Tonight on Super Size vs Super Skinny, two new residents are moving into the feeding clinic. One is a quick fix kid who never makes time for proper food. That's a week of breakfast. Is that enough? Well, I think it's enough. The other is a snack addict who's running out of time. Increased weight will increase your risks of all sorts of medical conditions. And those are the things that are going to kill you. They're forced to confront the reasons behind their destructive diets. I've had like physical bullying and verbal bullying, and it does affect you. Also this week, our anorexics must relinquish the tight control they place over their bodies. I could almost feel a collective sigh coming out of all my pores, like, ah, what, what have I done to deserve this after four years? And Anna Richardson attempts to ride the waves in her quest for the perfect body. Three year old Nick has had enough of being super skinny. I do get the Mickey taken out of me for being quite thin. I look at my friends and they're a lot bigger than me. Him being the scrawny one, um, it is it's the joke of joke of the friends. Thanks, mate. He's having a laugh, obviously, but it obviously shows that I look thin. If I'm getting a um, Mickey taken out of me, I don't feel confident. Nick's desperate to measure up to his mates. So he's checking into the feeding clinic, overseen by Dr. Christian Jessen. Hello, I'm Christian. Nice to meet you. He's already undergone a full medical to make sure he's up to the challenge. 181 centimetres tall. An average man of 5 foot 11 should weigh 11 and a half stone. So you are 129 pounds. That's an unhealthy 9 stone 3. Nick's feeble frame is a result of his disastrous diet. When it comes to eating, I don't enjoy it. I just eat, because you have to. He lives at home, but snubs his mum's cooking in favour of fast food quick fixes. I don't eat breakfast. One, two, three o'clock, I'll have a sandwich and an energy drink. Eight, nine o'clock, if I'm near fast food takeout, I'll get one. With barely enough food to keep him going, this quick fix kid fuels his body with caffeine drinks. In a day, I usually get through about two or three energy drinks. Uh, in a week, anywhere between 14 and 20. OK, Nick, so I have done my sums, and your BMI is coming out at about 17.8. I mean, a couple of stone would put you into a more healthy BMI, if I'm honest with you. OK. Do you have an ideal that you'd like to be? Yeah, about 11. Why? Just a little more healthier. I just put some muscle on myself. How do you feel you look? Bag of bones, basically. You obviously do have issues, you know, with, with your body. Well, really, it's self-esteem, isn't it? I don't think you're particularly proud of yourself or happy with yourself, are you? Nick's confidence has hit rock bottom. He's longing for love, but feels like no one takes a second glance. I think they would just take one look at me and think he's too thin for my liking. Nick doesn't have really that much luck with ladies, no. Not really. Whereas if I feel I was a little bit bigger and had a bit more muscly, I could have confidence to walk up to girls and start chatting to them. To help put an end to his hunger strike, we brought in the big guns. Meet Alison, Nick's supersized swap partner. The bigger I've got, food has just become my focus. She's so fanatical about food, it's become a 24-hour obsession. I'm often in my sleep, I think about what I'm going to eat the next day. I'm always just thinking about the next meal. So you are 155 centimetres. 37-year-old Alison is double the average weight of what a five-foot-three person should weigh. 276. That means Alison is tipping the scales at nearly 20 stone. Alison indulges her passion for eating by cooking hearty home-cooked dinners for her husband and two children. My dinner in the evening I enjoy the most, and it's just the size I have is too big. I always find that I eat too much. But that's not the half of it. On top of her massive meals, working mum Alison is a cereal snacker. My favourite snacks are chocolate and crisps, a packet of biscuits, and then in the evening I can eat half a tub of ice cream. By grazing on fatty and sugary foods throughout the day, 
she's piled on the pounds. Every day I think about my weight. It just makes me feel uncomfortable. It's just massive. I don't... I don't like being that weight. Alison's about to get a wake-up call that will prove just how big her problem has become. Alison, your BMI comes out at 52.7. Over 40, we call morbidly obese. You're not even in that section. You're in the next section again, 50 plus, which is serious. Increased weight will increase your blood pressure. It will increase your risks of all sorts of medical conditions like diabetes, even cancers. I, I would suggest that, you know, your, your health reasons really ought to be high up on your list of motivators. Because those are the things that are going to kill you. It's time for these two extreme eaters to take drastic action. With a 10 stone weight difference, they're at dangerous ends of the scale. They're about to come face to face with their demons and address the issues they have with food once and for all. It's now time for Super Size to meet Super Skinny. My name's Alison. Nick. Obviously, I look different to you, yeah. <laughs> what size waist have you got? 27. 27 is my thigh. <laughs> 28 is bigger than your waist. And they're about to get another shock to their systems. To show them exactly what they have to stomach for the next five days, Dr. Jessen's going to demonstrate what a week's worth of each other's food looks like. We're going to start straight away with your breakfasts. Three pieces of toast. That's a week of breakfasts. Let's move on to lunch. That was a chocolate bar. That's two meals. You've gone through most of your day now. Is that enough? Obviously not, no, but I think it's enough. Well, let's have a look at your dinners. A burger. When the hunger pangs hit, which isn't very often, it's a junk food jamboree of burgers, chips and pizza. Let's have a look at what you drink. Energy drinks. Energy. I think you use them as a substitute for food. The recommended daily intake for a man is 2,500 calories, but Nick has just 1,486, which adds up to a weekly undereat of almost three days' worth of food. Now it's time for Alison's meals to go under the microscope, starting with her breakfasts. Croissant. Really, really high fat. And that particular type of cereal, also very high fat. OK, lunch. That looks like a salami sandwich. Yeah. Let's move on to dinner. Rice and chicken. Alison doesn't eat rubbish all of the time. The problem is they are big portions, as I think you're going to find out this week. After three main meals a day, Alison then grazes on high-calorie junk food. What you snack on is pretty much... Yeah, what he's, this is like... ..what Nick eats. The average woman should consume 2,000 calories a day, but Alison's huge portion sizes mean she gets through a whopping 2,814 calories which all adds up to a gut-busting overeat of almost three days' worth of food every week. This is too much, and that's what's piling on the weight for you, and we're going to address that. From this point onwards, then, your diets are now officially swapped. So give it your best shot. <laughs> Coming up, Alison gets a supersized wake-up call from America. My name is Stephen English. I'm 59 stone, and I'm 40 years old. And Anna Richardson attempts to ride the waves. Ah! I'm Anna Richardson, and I'm obsessed with getting the perfect body. All I see in front of the mirror are buggy bits and blemishes, and all I want is perfection. They are like two giant blancmanges. Over the last five weeks, I've tried everything to get myself the body beautiful. You name it, I'm trying it, and that's including the gym. <laughs> However, I'm a girl in a hurry, and if the gym can't give me what I want, then I'll try whatever's going to get it. Fine. Take these stretch marks, for example. No amount of gym work is going to get rid of these. So stretch marks all over my boobs, all down my hips, on the inside of my thighs, and those are really unattractive. Stretch marks are a form of scarring on the skin, and the majority of women get them at some stage in life. There are all sorts of treatments on the market that claim to get rid of them, from creams to laser treatment to cosmetic surgery, but none of these methods can guarantee complete success. However, there's a new kid on the block that claims top-notch results, carboxy. 
I'm off to Harley Street to meet car boxy practitioner Linda Adams. Apparently, it's not permanent, but it does claim to seriously reduce those unsightly stretch marks. Carboxy therapy is an infusion of carbon dioxide gas directly into the skin using a very fine needle. And what that does is basically causes your body to produce oxygen. So you're effectively increasing blood flow to the area. So lots of new oxygen, lots of nutrients to the skin. So you're improving the texture, the tone, the firmness, and also improve the color of the area. But what I really want to know is, is it painful? And only one person can answer that, Linda's next patient, 30-year-old business consultant, Veronica. She's halfway through her course of treatments. Tell me the truth, does it hurt? Um, no pain, no gain. I would say it does hurt a little bit. It hurts. Well, here goes. The first needle pricks the skin and the gas is released. The needle barely goes in at all. It's just, it's the gas that just goes under the skin and bubbles it up. Is it a bit like a bee sting? Bee sting, yeah. I'll, I'll throw it up wine. Lots of bee stings? Yeah. <laughs> you can see how we're getting some nice redness to the area. Yeah. We're increasing blood flow yes. at this point. These treatments cost about £100 per session, and as they're not permanent, ongoing top-ups could prove rather expensive. If I knew that that treatment was permanent, definitely, stretch marks gone forever, I would absolutely have it done. But the thing is, you know, put a bit of weight on, have a baby, whatever, new stretch mark, you start all over again. And for me, for the sake of, you know, what looked like 100 injections, I'd rather wear big pants. So, unfortunately, the effects won't last forever and the price tag isn't cheap. So, it's back to exercise for that perfect body. But I am sick of the gym. Check this out. I think I'm turning into G.I. Jane which is not the look I'm going for. What else is out there that will get me trim, taut and terrific? I want a body that's lean and sculpted like Cameron Diaz and Demi Moore. So join me later when I road test one of their favourite activities, surfing. <laughs> Supersized snack lover Alison and super skinny junk food junkie Nick have swapped their diets in an attempt to address their harmful eating habits. It's time for their first meal in the feeding clinic and for Nick to get a taste of Alison's massive portion sizes. What is that? <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's like chicken and rice that we have, chicken casserole and rice. And in return, Alison is getting one of his fast food favourites. I'm definitely going to finish mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> I'll even finish the ketchup. <laughs> Whilst Nick struggles with his mammoth meal... I think I'll be out to finish it. I'll feel full already. It takes Alison no time to polish off her puny portion size. It's more like eating a packet of crisps or something. It feels more like a snack than it does actually a meal. Yeah, that's enough. That is it. It even sticks out. Like... <laughs> I think mine sticks out because I finished that. <laughs> Nick stretched his stomach to the absolute limit. But later that night, there's even more of Alison's food on the menu. <laughs> Her bedtime snacks of crisps and biscuits. My mind tells me that I need to have a pudding for my dinner or something. And yeah, so I just feel like I just need something before I go to bed. I feel bloated, full. I feel like I could go upstairs, lay down and not move for another an hour. At lunch the next day, Alison is confronted with a snack-sized taste of her own medicine. It doesn't look very appetising, does it? <laughs> Seriously. Is that I, my lunch? I feel proper out of order now getting wow. it. Alison is no stranger to crisps and chocolate. When I have my lunch, I do have that with my lunch. But eating them in isolation is making her view her snacking in a new light. It just on its own, it just doesn't feel good. It's just rubbish food, it's just rubbish. It just makes you feel rubbish, but you don't realise when you're eating it with a sandwich how it makes you feel, but I just feel crap. In a recent survey, 89% of people admitted to snacking in between meals, and it's usually out of boredom or depression rather than hunger. But the foods that we tend to turn to in our moments of weakness are high in sugar and high in fat, which is the worst thing we could do. Snacking on sugary foods temporarily raises your blood sugar levels, but when the energy levels crash, 
it leaves you feeling tired and low. It's a vicious circle that's hard but necessary to break. It's beginning to dawn on Alison just how damaging her diet is, and particularly her excessive snacking habits, which are causing her to overeat by nearly 1,000 calories a day, and that's mostly in her sugary and fatty snacks. This is the first thing that she's going to have to get on top of. Dr Jessen wants to highlight just how serious Alison's situation really is, so he's arranged a personal message from America. I want to show you a film that's been made specifically for you. This is a realistic picture of what might be if you don't change things. OK. Hello. My name is Stephen English. I'm 59 stone and I'm 40 years old. The reason I began to put on weight is because I was independent and I was living alone and I had freedom to cook and eat as I wanted to. I would eat fried chicken, spaghetti, french fries, banana pudding, cake, pies, and after a period of time, it just got out of hand. I have many medical problems uh, because of the weight. I've developed diabetes, high blood pressure, uh, lymphedema, gout. I've been warned that Diabetes could result in death. I've been warned by doctors that high blood pressure could cause heart attacks and stroke, and that could result in death. So there are many uh, consequences that you can face through obesity. I feel scared. The things that I'm doing at the moment to change my life are trying to eat healthy, trying to exercise on a daily basis, try to burn off what I've eaten during the day. If you are in danger of obesity, uh, a message from me, just try to eat healthy, try to exercise, have high confidence and self-esteem in yourself. Uh, think positive, don't allow yourself to get in the condition because weight is easy to put on but very hard to get off. Make those changes so you won't be in the predicament or the situation that I've been in, because you only get one life. So, what do you think of that? <laughs> all his medical conditions, you know, are all very real, nasty conditions that lead to death. But they're conditions that you at the weight you are at, are now equally at risk of. Your risk is the same, same as his. Same as his, yeah, irrespective of the weight. Yeah, he may yeah, be because he mentioned the same things. I said high blood pressure and stuff. You are in the same mm -hmm. category as yeah. his. What's upsetting you most? Mm. Just like you said, I am just the same as him. It is the same, isn't it? And you are teetering on the edge. I know it's been really hard for Alison to critically examine her eating habits, but it's been vital that she's done this because now she knows where she's been going wrong and she can start to make some much needed changes. Coming up. Nick has deep revelations about his disastrous diet. If I'm around new people, I won't eat anything because of my teeth, you know what I mean? I've just stuck with it. Plus, our group of anorexia sufferers have to face up to their most calorie-laden fears. I looked at that and thought, no, I don't actually know how I'm going to cope with this. Super skinny quick fix Nick and super sized snacker Alison have swapped diets in a mission to break their bad eating habits. It's day three of the diet swap, and although Alison has started to make progress, by lunchtime tensions are beginning to mount. With no proper meal for three days, Alison is famished. She's preparing a jacket potato for Nick, but her first meal of the day is a solitary cup of coffee. I can't believe that's it. Sorry, it's not a lot. Alison's had enough of his slim pickings and can't bite her tongue any longer. I think the diet is crap. 
in the diet is really, really rubbish. The thing is, you know it. You know that this isn't good for you, yeah. just having that. What I don't really understand is why you just, just have this and nothing else when you know that how you want to be, and it's like people you look at, girls you look at, girls how you want to be, and your mates. I just don't get why you just have just this. Well, I think, I think what it is is when I was in school as well, I got bullied quite a bit for, like, obviously my teeth were quite noticeable, if you know what I mean. And if I'm getting called names, Beave, Bun, Walrus was a good one, for example. It put me off, if you know what I mean. I didn't want to eat in front of people because they would oh, be you looking think they'd at me. Looking at you too? Yeah. I've had like physical bullying and verbal bullying, and it does affect you. If I'm around new people, I won't eat anything because I feel like they're watching me eat because of my teeth, if you know what I mean. That's probably what I think so I used to just fluids because it's just quick. No one has to look at me eat. But it is upsetting when people like doing me. Mm, don't cry, make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I've just stuck with it. Obviously, yeah, I mean, I, I do let my best mates call me out because they're my best mates. Yeah, you, should, yeah, but you shouldn't. You shouldn't. They don't though. mean it, I know yeah, they I don't know, mean it. Yeah, I know, but you still shouldn't because deep down it has to affect you. It just like pisses me off when people I like, don't know start doing it. Yeah, no, we shouldn't let anybody do it. Let anyone do it. <laughs> give you a hug. Come here. Sure. Make a hug. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a tough few days, but Alison provides Nick with the emotional support that he needs. <laughs> You're a good looking lad. <laughs> um, I've learned to open up, basically. I mean, I've never really done this to anyone. It's made me realise I need to change my diet. It's made me like think about things that have happened in the past and why I do eat the way I do. I'm really pleased that Nick's been able to open up to Alison about his insecurities because this is not something that he's ever really been able to do before. And if this diet swap's going to work, then the two of them have got to help each other. The first step on Nick's road to recovery is to discover a passion for eating. Basically, when it comes to cooking, I have no idea. As long as it involves a microwave or a deep fat fryer, that's as far as I know. Alison's brought Nick to the supermarket to teach him that there's more to life than fast food. Alison's challenged Nick to find all the ingredients for a spaghetti bolognese. For the quick fix kid, this will not be easy. And he's going it alone. Yeah, I'm looking for the uh, actual spaghetti. I don't know where to start looking. Bolognese sauce written on it, so it's got to be for a spaghetti bolognese. That's it, isn't it? That is all I need, I swear. Hiya. Yo. How did you get on? <laughs> you didn't do bad, but there's a few missing ingredients. Yeah, only a few, like onions, carrots, chopped tomatoes, seasoning, and herbs. But after the shopping, Nick's dropping. He's had no caffeine for three days and he's feeling the strain. I've never had a nap during the day. Came back here and I literally passed out because no, none of the energy drinks. My body isn't used to it, so it's making me more tired. But there's no rest for the wicked as Alison's about to begin phase two of Nick's cookery lesson. She's going to show him how to make his spaghetti bolognese from scratch. I have no idea what to cut that. But just prepping the veg is throwing Nick into a world of confusion. OK, go for it. We're going to start with this. Have you ever seen garlic before? Yeah, I always thought it was green, though. Green? Yeah. Mm. That's it, go for it. Add minutes of brown all over and cook for 10 to 15 yeah. minutes. So 10 to 15 yeah. minutes is too long for me. Because <laughs> I'm a hungry now, eat now person. <laughs> After slaving over a hot stove for half an hour, it's time for the taste test. Nothing tastes, no, it tastes, tastes good. good, yeah. It tastes brilliant. Nick's impressed, which is just as well as it's Alison's job to dish up, and she doesn't skimp with the serving. And after a busy day together and some home cooking, the atmosphere at the table has dramatically improved. Despite Alison's veritable feast of more fast food. Food, junk food. Too mean. 
<laughs> I feel like I've ordered sitting there eating this in front of you. <laughs> it's a little, look. You can't even see I've got any food there. Where's my dinner? <laughs> it tastes really nice. It, I don't want to say it, but it does taste like a beef burger because obviously mm. it is beef. It's nice. But it's got all your vegetables in it as well. So it's a lot healthier than a beef mm. burger. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could feel myself comfortable, but I'd want to carry on. Mm. I'm ignoring my stomach this time because it's too nice. That's good. I'm actually quite proud. I've just made myself spaghetti bolognese. Never cooked it before. He did a really, really good job. And it's just nice, yeah, to see him do that and enjoy it at the end. Yeah, it's really good. I will definitely make that again. Definitely. Just um, a smaller amount. <laughs> Roz, Fiona, Morag and Ashley are all suffering from anorexia nervosa. They're six weeks into an eight-week course designed to challenge some of the key aspects to this destructive illness. I feel like I look like a little boy. Helping the group address their issues are two renowned eating disorder specialists, consultant psychiatrist Dr Peter Rowan and eating disorder dietitian Ursula Philpot. They're over halfway through the course and the group are beginning to feel the benefits of their therapy. Really looking forward to the future just in general now. I'm just so convinced I'm making progress, and, but I just, I can't let it slip because I'm just afraid of sort of taking my foot off the gas a little bit and it'll all plummet again because given the opportunity, I might make mistakes. I've been feeling that um, I look different that I don't look as thin as I used to look, which is a good thing. I know that I've done things over the last few weeks that I thought I wouldn't be able to do, and I've actually felt really good about it, so it's just like two fingers to anorexia, really, um, and I just need to be able to remember that a bit more. Bye for now. This week, the group's challenge is to take part in a day of indulgence at a spa. They'll need to relinquish the incredibly tight control they have over their bodies and submit to a pampering session. People with eating disorders can become experts at denying themselves any kind of indulgence and instead choosing to punish themselves and their bodies. So I've brought them to a spa so they can experience what it's like to pamper and indulge themselves and their bodies. It just goes against my nature to do anything to look after myself, treat myself. It feels like unless I've earned something, then I don't deserve it. Roz isn't able to be here today because she's unwell. This is quite common with people with low weights because the immune system has been weakened. Anorexics have very low self-esteem, very low feelings of self-worth. And because of that, they avoid really anything which pampers them or gives them pleasure a lot of the time. And it's actually very good for them to go to something like a spa and begin the process being given permission, really, to have nice things done to them is something that most of them will not have experienced for a very long time. And I think that learning to live more comfortably with yourself and with your own body image is an important part of the process of recovery. Four years of anorexia has taken its toll on Ashley's once healthy body. As far as my body goes, I am uncomfortable with it. I've sort of come to realise that I'm probably not as desirable to look at as I was. I think his appearance is rather shocking. You see his back and under his arm. That's when you see it. It really makes you stand back and, and I live with him and it's like... I mean, it's, it's like a physically, it's like a 12-year-old boy. For some anorexics, keeping their body in a childlike state is a way of fending off the responsibilities of adult life. As I became aware that this was a way of me not having to grow up, that was another kind of an additional reason for me to carry on holding on to this, you know, control of the food. One of the sort of constantly recurring um, ideas in anorexia has always been of um, the anorexic holding on to youth in some way, sometimes regarded as a sort of Peter Pan syndrome. And a lot of the anorexics are then trapped wherever it is that they start the illness. 
And some of them, of course, welcome that, find it a safer place to be, and are not really comfortable with the idea of moving on towards um, normal adulthood. The group have become so used to punishing their bodies, they've forgotten the pleasure of indulging them. Just loving it. Like, ah. The group have managed to relax in front of each other, but now they face a new challenge as they go in for their massage. When you know that other people are going to be looking at your body and seeing your body, you are... You do sort of want to explain to them why it's like this. There's nothing of you. There's, it's, you're very skeletal, so you're very aware of where all your bones are sticking out. I remember seeing her for, uh, for the first time and realising just how painfully thin uh, she was. I'd actually just like there to be more of her to love. It did sort of start to make me think that I have neglected my body in the past, you know, specifically not eating enough. So it's nice to have the opportunity to do something nice to my body for a change. It's really nice, very relaxing. The massage session is giving Ashley real insight into the harm he's doing to his body. I have punished myself a lot in the last few years. I'm the one that's physically paid for it. I think today's pampering session for me was something that was needed. I was treating my body and I could almost feel a collective sigh coming out of all my pores, like, ah, what, what have I done to deserve this after four years? Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm Matthew, I'm going to be your host today. Come on through. Fiona's reluctance to become a woman means she's never experienced intimate physical contact. I'm 25 years old and I've never had a relationship. So relinquishing control over her body and taking part in a massage is an important breakthrough. Although it's like really hard to try and talk myself into pampering, when you actually do it, it feels really good. It's just very nice to be able to relax and know that it's OK. <laughs> I think my self-esteem is starting to get better. There may be an opportunity for me to have a relationship in the future. It's just one of those things to look forward to and one of those reasons for me to get better. Particularly if I find a bloke who'll give me back massages. <laughs> now that they've indulged their bodies, it's time to end the day with a food indulgence. I've brought along some cakes today, which is a normal part of treating ourselves, and I'd like the group to try and eat them together. If you've got an eating disorder, then foods that represent indulgences, these are the foods that people will find particularly hard to eat. It's important to keep pushing the group, as eating more calories is their number one priority. Cream and chocolate and pastry and mm. cake are all the things I just never, never have. With all the challenges we've had so far, it's been like, OK, I can see how I'm going to cope with this. For the first time today, I looked at that and thought, no, I don't actually know how I'm going to cope with this. My initial feelings were just of just complete fear. Like, that was, that was the most fear I felt in a challenge we've done. I'm just wanting right. you to have a taste of it <laughs> and see fine. if you savour it and see, see how much you feel you're able to have of it. Even trying a small piece of cake is a major challenge for the group. I knew that it was this really, really scary food, and that was when my heart started to go. It was like, oh, my goodness, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. It's quite squidgy. The piece of cake was only small, but it was more about what that piece of cake represented to people than the cake itself. With cake, it's like, it's a small bit of cake that probably isn't even going to fill me up, but it's just going to make me feel just as bad as if I ate a yeah. plate of fish and chips. Yeah. It just represents something that's too sort of wicked and bad and that mm -hmm. you shouldn't do it. And my heart was going completely <laughs> like 50 million miles per hour and my, my mouth was suddenly overwhelmed with all these flavours. For me, it was just sensory overload. I just want you to try and take from that that you can do things that you find terrifying yeah. and that actually you don't even want to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you can still yeah. do them. The reality is that having a little bit of cake now and again is not going to kill you. Despite the anxieties, they still did it, which I think shows just how far they've come, really, at this point.
It's the last day of the swap, and Alison and Nick are building a barbecue to cook their final meal. It's been an entertaining and an emotional week at the same time. It's been a roller coaster ride. It's just like, yeah, put the spotlight right in your life, and it's been hard to do, but it's worth it. I'm sure your glamorous assistant. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's a lovely girl. She's safe. Um, and I'm definitely going to keep in contact with her. Thank you. I'm going to be there for him as well. And he'll be there for me. She actually does want to come down and meet all my mates and come clubbing. So, yeah, we're going to definitely keep in contact. Mm -hmm. So much fun you had this week? Um, with you, loads. With the food, none. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not just leaving with a new friendship. Dr Christian is also giving them their tailored diet plans. Are you about to go home? It's your last day. Are you happy? Yes, I am. You look very excited. <laughs> very. Has it been a good, successful week for you, would you say? Yeah, it has, yeah. Yeah, why? I enjoyed it. What's happened? I just learnt a lot about myself. Nick, have you? Yeah, so yeah, it's been a hard week, but yeah, deep revelation. Um, had time to think. I'm definitely up for cooking more. Obviously. You've enjoyed cooking? Yeah, I have enjoyed cooking, thanks to you. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm bang up for... Uh, learning more recipes. You both have, I think, made some real advances forward into what's... It's not just a question of not eating enough or eating too much, is it? No. Things run far deeper than that, and there are reasons why you've been doing it. So let me give you now your nice, healthy eating plans, all especially done for you, Alison, that's yours, Nick. And I'm going to see you back here in 12 weeks. And remember, though, this is a really important point. It's not a 12-week diet plan. This is changes now for the rest of your life. Stay in touch with each other. You help him, OK? You mother him a little bit, because it'd be good for him. And I'll see you in 12 weeks. All right, best of luck, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I needed this. It's almost like a wake-up call now. Definitely my postcard from America that I received. Um, so, yeah, I will do it. I know I will do it. i just got to accept that it will take me time. It's not going to be a quick fix. I am looking forward to um, starting a new life, basically. It's like a, a new era, if you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, it is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Uh, keep in contact. See you soon. It's been an insightful week for Alison and Nick, but the real test is about to begin. They'll be back in 12 weeks, and Dr Christian is hoping to see big changes. Coming up, Anna tries to surf. Well, stay on the board. <laughs> Plus, it's the moment of truth for super size and super skinny. You think you haven't done very well, don't you? Yeah. You've lost. At the start of this series, I set out to try and get a honed and toned body. I joined my local gym, and with the help of a personal trainer, I lunged, punched, and generally sweated in my quest for perfection. But I've hated every single minute of it. So I'm ditching the gym and have set myself a new challenge to find an exercise that I can enjoy and keep up. I'm road testing celebrity activities that seem to help keep them looking red carpet ready. And today I'm hitting the waves to try out a favourite of Demi Moore and Cameron Diaz. Surfing. Check this out. They get Malibu Beach, I get Swansea. But I do get Ben, my own personal surfing instructor, here to get me hanging ten and riding the waves towards a super fit bod. So if I were to surf a lot, what kind of diff change in my body could I expect? You'd definitely be feeling a lot fitter, a lot healthier, a lot more tanned, just generally a bit more toned in the muscles, um, burns a lot of fat. I mean, uh, especially in Wales, uh, in the winter, just keeping warm, you're going to burn a lot of energy. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I don't think I'm built for this. So when I eventually get my wetsuit on and after a quick warm-up, it's time to hit the water. This is time for me to go. Can I go and get a cup of tea? Will you notice? 
The health benefits of surfing are numerous. Surfing is a great cardiovascular exercise, using mostly upper body muscles to do the paddling work and leg muscles to guide the board once you're up and riding. Since surfing involves more time paddling, it provides an intense upper body and core workout. But it's pretty good fun too, although if you're like me, you'll spend far more time falling off than standing on your board. Well, someone just put me out of misery. Given that I would like to get an A-list body, how often would you recommend that I was out here in all weathers surfing? Uh, maybe at least at least twice a week, probably more than that. And for how many hours? A normal lessons about two and a half hours, and most people after that are very tired. Yeah. So it takes it out of you, doesn't it? I it mean, does. you, you can build up a bit of an appetite. I could do with a bag of chips. <laughs> it does make you hungry. All right. Well, come on then. Should we try and catch some more waves? Yeah, let's do it. but I cannot tell you how hard it is to get up on that board. Take it from me. Look at the state. <laughs> but my persistence wasn't futile as I eventually managed to ride that way. had such a brilliant day, really, really enjoyed myself. Out on the sea, you're out in beautiful countryside, you're at one with nature, fantastic. Now apparently, Cameron Diaz likes to have a slice of pizza after surfing, I can understand why, it is knackering. I am gonna have hot chocolate and a chocky bicky, and this time, I do deserve it. Mmm. Three months ago, Nick and Alison checked into the feeding clinic. And now they're back to see if things have improved. I was just hoping to have lost a bit of weight. How I'm feeling today is a little bit nervous. Uh, obviously, I want to find out how well I've done or how bad I've done. So, Alison, how have the last 12 weeks been? Very challenging. I've made a few changes. That's good. So what sort of changes have you made to your diet so far? I eat more fruit and I don't eat chocolate anymore and I only eat crisps maybe once a week. And then lunch, instead of the crispy chocolatey lunch that you have, what are you having now? Soup, sandwiches and soup and sushi. So that's all good. Yeah. So what's the future? Have you set yourself any goals? Just to get to the gym a bit more, that's all really. Nick, how have you been getting on since I saw you last? Good. Um, got a job, finally. Oh, good. And has this had any effect on your eating and sticking to your diet plan or not? In a way, it has, yeah, cos I get a lunch break and I go and meet my mate on lunch and grab a sandwich, bite to eat. So you feel that you've made some changes? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, feel, I feel like I eat a lot more now. Cos you just lived previously on chocolate bars and energy drinks, wasn't Basically, it? Basically, yeah. Giving up the energy drink was quite hard. Um, I did literally say to myself, right, no more. Um, so you don't miss it now? No, don't no. miss it at all. Before Dr. Jessen reveals the results, Nick and Alison are reunited. <laughs> <laughs> Have you found it? Easy and hard at the same time. Have you been cooking any spaghetti bolognese? I did for the first week. Okay. Uh, I'll be honest, my mum's been cooking the rest for me. So. Oh, she? But you're yeah. at least she's cooking and she's eating. cooking. What about yourself? I eat less. <laughs> less. So you look, your arms look a bit smaller. Okay. Is that just me or, yeah? I probably look the same, didn't I, so... It's hard to tell. Because the last time I saw you, you were naked. <laughs> so I can't I'm tell. I'm naked, but... <laughs> So, how do you think Alison's looking? Do you think she's lost weight? Yeah, I definitely... I do agree the arms look thinner. You both found it quite tough, I think, didn't you? I mean, I keep going on about you about little changes, but they do actually make a difference, believe it or not, even though you don't believe me. You think you haven't done very well, don't you? Yeah. You've lost. A stone and a half. <laughs> and you've lost eight inches around your tummy. There's eight inches less of you in this world now. You've done well. Yeah, fantastic. It's wicked. I can't believe it. <laughs> so, Nick, your turn. Honestly, what do you think's happened with you? I'm probably about the same, maybe a little bit heavier. 
OK. Well, I have to say, I'm a bit worried about you, because you've lost weight. And you haven't just lost a little bit of weight. You've lost half a stone. Really? Yeah. Why do you think that is? I'm quite shocked as well. I'm eating more, so how is that physically possible? I think you were getting a lot of calories per day just in glugging back sugary energy drinks, and I suspect you're not replacing them with solid foods, and I yeah. think you're probably not eating enough still. So I thought I was doing fine. I thought, right, I'm eating more food. This must be going OK. I think you need to eat more food. I need to eat more, <laughs> and more I? food. I think we need to revisit your diet plan. There's obviously a deficiency somewhere. You're still not getting enough calories, and we need to work out how best we're going to get you to fill those calories. Clearly, Nick has a lot of work to do if he's going to get his body to a healthy weight. To lose half a stone is a big wake-up call, so basically, yeah, go home now, and I'm physically thinking, go home, fill a bowl up, and just stuff it in my face. But for Alison, the news couldn't be better. I am proud of myself, but, yeah, I think once I get and tell my husband, that's going to make me, yeah, really proud. Next time on Super Size vs Super Skinny, moving into the feeding clinic is Louise, the queen of convenience food. In the last seven years, I've gained over eight stone in weight. And Carly, who can't find the time to eat. I can go the day feeling hungry, but it won't have any effect on me. Our anorexics struggle with the challenge of making and eating pizza. I can't. You can't. You're, you're really... Gonna you've had enough. Really, I'm going to stop. And stretch over. And Anna Richardson raises the bar in her quest for the perfect body. This is as far as I can go. <laughs>